we're back. We're back at the noon hour. That's when usually people have lunch. So it would be appropriate to talk about restaurants in Hawaii. <clears throat> and the executive director of the Hawaii Restaurant Association is our co-host and contributor. And that's Cheryl Matsuoka. And she joins us today with Eric Workman, uh, who is one of the executives, the marketing executives, uh, at uh, the Polynesian Cultural Center in Laie. So we're going to talk about, uh, gee whiz, a huge restaurant um, enterprise, if you will, in Laie, that is the Polynesian Cultural Center. they got five restaurants there. Uh, we would be remiss if we did not discuss the Polynesian Cultural Center. It's a big deal. Okay, so <clears throat> Cheryl, why don't you introduce Eric Workman and also introduce the scope of the show. Yes, thank you so much, Jay, for having us on. Eric Workman is the Executive Vice President and Chief Marketing Officer at the Polynesian Culture Center. He oversees all the marketing, sales, and business development for the center. And right now, reopening has now, you know, the Polynesian Culture Center was closed down for 10 months. And now they're reopening with increased sanitization procedures throughout the center. And especially looking at, you know, their hands on in the village Samoa. So they now have sanitization stations all around the Polynesian Cultural Center. So today we're talking about, you know, we are the Hawaii Restaurant Association, the voice of Hawaii's restaurant and food service industry. When visitors plan their trip to Hawaii, Jay, one of the must-dos on their bucket list is a Hawaiian luau, right? So when you think of Hawaii, you think of a luau and the celebration that comes along with it. With the lei greeting, I wore my lei today. The celebration of the beautiful sunsets, our trade wind um, breezes, gorgeous hula dancers with their grass skirts and their coconut bras, and the feast, the Kalua pig, hot right out of the emu. Fresh chilled lomi lomi salmon, lao laos, and my favorite, which is the chilled haupias, right? So you think about all the yummy foods that are at a luau. However, this pandemic first appeared on the islands, and then we had our state mandatory stay at home orders and the travel restrictions. So the PCC, Polynesian Culture Center, we, we um, name it the PCC, closed their doors for 10 months. And the difficult impact to our local community was the furloughed employees. So now, as Governor Ige allows us to reopen, the Polynesian Culture Center has reopened and now are, is welcoming back not only our visitors, but also our locals. Keeping in mind right now, we're in tier two. So in our Hawaii restaurants and at the Polynesian Culture Center, they're practicing all the safe protocols the six foot distancing, only five people at a table while dining. All the employees have to wear face masks. Face masks are worn by all the guests unless they're eating or drinking. In fact, enhanced sanitizing. And you know, the PCC is an open air um, attraction. And the Luau, while it's covered, it's still outdoors. And they're sanitizing with electronic electrostatic sprayers. And another change at the Luau is no longer are the guests allowed to serve themselves. They actually have servers there on the Luau to serve you your food. So I'm gonna now bring on Eric and he can tell us a little bit more about the impacts and what they're doing at the Polynesian Culture Center to welcome back our guests. And Thank we are you. very curious about the Polynesian Cultural Center. So let's drill down on all the great background that Cheryl gave us. So what great. would you add to her comments? Well, she gave a great summary there. That was wonderful. I think uh, she's, she obviously knows us well. Yes, we, we did open on January 18th after being closed for 10 months. And, and it has been a very limited opening. So we are, a, everything closed down when, when COVID happened um, uh, back in uh, January 18th of last year. Uh, I'm sorry, we opened January 18th. But back in March, when we closed down, everything shut down. All of our luau's, all of our restaurants, all of our shows, everything. And so it's wonderful to have the the heartbeat of this community going again. To hear the drums playing, that to hear yeah, literally to see the activity, the excitement starting to to happen again has been really wonderful. We really want to to welcome back the community. We want to welcome back visitors also. But we've worked very, very hard to make it a safe environment as well as fun and educational. 
So we um, we have we are open now five days a week. Uh, we're not we're closed on Wednesdays and Sundays, and we open at three forty five. And visitors can come in and take a brief canoe tour. Uh, that canoe used to fit 24 people approximately. Now we're lucky to get eight people on there with COVID spacing. But they take a canoe ride to, the, to one of the villages. And there they can participate in some activities. They have out that in the village, they even use hula hoops on the ground to space people out to ensure they stay socially distanced while participating. That's very clever. Um, and yeah, lots of, lots of fun little innovations to make it still fun, enjoyable, educational, but still safe. We have hand, uh, sanitizing, uh, no touch dispensers everywhere. COVID, uh, signage that we've tried to make unique to each Island and each location. Um, there's, there's, there are brief presentations that happen there in that village, trying to bring some of our best of different islands into that one village. And then they go to the luau, where we've reimagined the luau. So while we were sitting around for 10 months, we had a lot of time to think about what we could do better. And uh, one of those uh, areas we really focused on was the luau. Uh, our, our presentation in the luau, Oni Pa'a, which is a tribute to Queen Lilio Kalani. Uh, we've really um, enhanced that presentation, made it more meaningful, more impactful. It's Hawaii's only all Hawaiian luau. There's, you won't find fire knives in here. There's no Tahitian dancing. There's nothing, nothing Samoa, nothing other cults. It's all Hawaiian. And again, we wanted to pay tribute to, to Queen Lilio, Lilio Kalani and believe that, um, um, it, it's a great story that people need to hear as a, as the last remaining monarch in Hawaii. So from there, then reimagine the food. Uh, Greg Maples, uh, who is our director of, of our food, has worked very hard with his team to really amp it up, raise a level of um, performance there with the food itself. All new menu. Um, and an enhanced uh, vegetarian menu, vegan menu, even, believe it or not, for a luau that that could even be possible. Um, but throughout the luau, it's the, the number one priority is to make it safe. And we've got, you know, it starts back when our employees, before they even come to work, weekly, all of our employees are COVID tested. That, that cost us about $20,000 a week just in testing. But we're committed to creating a safe bubble here at PCC that makes it possible for our performers to stay healthy. And when they interact with each other, they are careful. Um, daily, every employee who comes into the center who works on these grounds must have a pass a daily health screening and with a temp check and a eight questions that they pass. And if they... They are weak on any one of those questions. They go right to one of our full-time, two full-time safety officers that have to approve whether they're allowed to come on the grounds or not. And we uh, dismiss them if there's any question on paid leave until we find out if they are positive or negative. Um, in the luau itself, we're capped at about 250 seats right now, which is about 12% of our pre-COVID capacity. Guests do not serve themselves. All food is served to guests. Guests never touch or interact the food. All of our servers wear a mask or an inverted face shield. All of our performers wear inverted face shields. It's a clear shield that uh, allows to see some kind of movement of the lips, but still protect and do what is required. Um, there's no reuse of, of cups or any table service. Uh, tables are socially distanced. As, as Cheryl mentioned, those regulations are very clear. Uh, if there's more than one party at a table that is not together, we place a plexiglass shield between the parties to separate that table. Uh, all tables are cleaned 
electrostatically they're cleaned before use and then after they're cleared and at the end of the day they're again sanitized with electrostatic sprayers S similar to the kind of sprayers that the airlines use for for sanitizing the inside of a plane so lots of work goes in to making this a safe as well as a fun and educational experience so if i count back 10 months from now january well february I get what uh, that would be March. I guess you closed. Yes. <clears throat> if you had to go back right now, you know, knowing all that we know, would you have closed at the same time or earlier or later? No, we 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 were the first ones to close that I'm aware of, and we we were just pulling our hair out in that decision, not wanting to do that. We have so many people we're responsible for. And we knew what it could mean, but we knew we had to be safe and we had to lead in safety and be responsible. And I think a lot of people don't realize that business, especially an institution like the Polynesian Cultural Center, its reputation is critical. We couldn't risk the safety of our employees or having any kind of event that would mar our, our reputation in any way. So we had to be extremely cautious. We closed, end up being, we, we were cautious. We closed what we thought was going to be for two weeks. And then within a week, people were, people thought it was silly of us to do that. But within one week, everybody else closed down after we closed. We, we just saw it coming. Again, we tried to be as responsible as possible. We've tried to be as responsible now as we can in opening is cautious and responsible. Well, you're, you're a commercial leader, so that, that really uh, confirms it. Um, so, so when you're closed, uh, gee, there's, you know, there's a lot of property involved. And as you mentioned, there are a lot of staff involved, huge number, thousands. Am I right to say thousands of people, uh, part-time and full-time thousands, is it? Or just yeah, we Yeah, before we shut down, we had about 1,400 employees. Mm, wow. Yeah. And, and uh, you mentioned that the uh, cultural aspect of the center is, is uh, Native Hawaiian issues and uh, Queen Malia Kalani and uh, you know, the history of the 19th century and so forth. Yeah. Um, but you, you have, a, a, or my recollection is, you have a lot of uh, staff that's uh, Pacific Islanders as yeah. well as yeah. Native Hawaiians who, who, you know, who advance the cultural aspect of the center. Yeah. Um, how did they do in the course of the 10 months, I mean, these, these, are, these guys are not making hundreds of thousands of dollars a year, even in the best of times. Um, how did they live? How did they survive? Uh, uh, what, and how many of them had to leave town, never come back for you? Yeah, that, that's a great, great question. We, I mean, our, our Polynesian employees are, are the backbone. We were created to provide jobs to bring students from the Pacific to the adjacent Brigham Young University. And we were to provide that, that employment for them to get that university education they wouldn't have been able to get otherwise. So we have a small core of full-time permanent employees augmented by this larger group of students from all over the South Pacific. But to your point, we've had, we have many, many of those students who couldn't even return home because their islands got shut down. So we have students from Tonga, Samoa, who have been here the whole time, who would love to return home, who haven't seen their families in a year, but um, they're here living on campus or living in the community. So fortunately, before COVID hit, we had saved for about five years, had saved everything we could in, in capital because we were going to build a new building. So we were saving for that time and, and uh, it, it was fortunate or whatever you want to call it, uh, that we had that savings on hand that we then repurposed to use to keep as many employees as we could hold. Yeah, what a lucky break that you had that reserve. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, we, we had saved for a rainy day and the rainy day certainly came, the storm came. Um, so, so did you take worked... care of them in some way while they were, while you were closed? I mean, did you, how, how did you, you know, try to 
you know, maintain the connection. Yeah. So many of our employees, so we did have an early round of employees who we offered voluntary severance packages to many, some took it and uh, have left the Island. Unfortunately, Uh, some are still in the community. Um, But those who remain the bulk of the employees that remained, we have been committed to keeping them whole. So uh, if they, after receiving, if those who are furloughed, if they, if after being furloughed and with uh, federal assistance on furlough, that adder, if they didn't stay, you know, substantially uh, whole, then we would bring them back and continue to pay for their employment. Uh, and, and that has been the case with many of our employees and those who stayed, well, as you said, we have a lot of grounds and facilities. We pulled weeds, we mowed, we trim hedges, uh, we painted, we, we did some capital work that we could afford to do in projects that would, uh, that a shutdown was helpful. Our whole lagoon, 42 acres, we have a giant lagoon that runs through the whole area. We drained the whole thing, cleaned it out, saved most of the fish, and, uh, and refilled it to where now it looks wonderful. See, that's we, great business. That's good business on all sides. You know, your place uh, probably looks better than it has in a long time. Uh, it's, it's been cleaned up. Uh, your employees who you supported through the course of the 10 months uh, probably love you to distraction. Uh, and, and on a moral level, it's been very nice that you did that. So yeah. Good for you, Eric. Well, it's, it's been a, a huge team effort and everybody here is committed to making that um, and, and helping everybody make it through this. But we are, we are ready uh, to get back I, I like, to work though. Of course. And so the question, uh, you know, you're the marketing officer, the chief of marketing for the, it's a huge job because you have, uh, I, what I venture to say, hundreds of that millions of, of tourists come around over the course of a year, that's a lot. And um, you have to, you know, make it known that the door is open. Yeah. And so at some point, uh, probably within the last month or two, you knew, again, pre-planning, you, you knew that uh, you were going to reopen. So as the marketing officer, somebody tells you, Eric, um, it's, it's time to get started again, uh, you know, to get the bubble machine working again. Yeah. Uh, how do you do that? How do you reach out to your constituency around the world and advise them to uh, come down and, you know, enjoy the center again? Yeah. Yeah, you're right. It's a tough job. Thank you for reminding me. It, it, we have a great team that works very uh, hard to, to get the word out. I, we have shifted most of our resources to digital online promotion. Uh, We're trying hard to reach out to people who have any plans of coming to Hawaii to to help them know that we're open and we're here before they ever arrive. There are so many fewer people than are here now or coming now than were before. We're waiting for them to come back in larger numbers um, because it's it's really not sustainable where we are today. Um, We maybe don't want to go back to where we were in the high numbers where we were for Hawaii, we were talking about traffic earlier, um, but we need more f- to keep everybody uh, whole. So yeah, we're, we're doing all that we can to reach out to them digitally. We want to support uh, Hawaii Tourism Authority and the efforts they're making to reach out, to bring people back. If we just let people know that Hawaii is, if you keep the rules and you come back and you are, a responsible visitor and you're careful and you're respectful and you get the test that you need before you come and you wear a mask while you're here, this could be one of the safest places in the world to be. And and as more people learn that, I, I was looking at charts last night, Hawaii is by far, I mean, at the bottom of the list of all the states in the United States for COVID. And we do have a safe island environment here, like nowhere else in the world. It's remarkable because we do have tourists, and they could bring COVID anytime. 
Yeah. So as you say, we have to make and enforce the rules. We do that. Uh, so let me let me go to the restaurants. So five restaurants yeah. you mentioned. Uh, are all the restaurants different, uh, or or is there a common denominator, you know, theme for them? Um, and and I guess also I want to know have they have they changed in that theme and that common denominator now that you're reopening? Yeah. Wonderful question. We have, we do have five. We've only opened. So we opened uh, several months ago, we opened uh, Pounders, which is open. It's in our Hukilao marketplace, which is open to the public at all times. Uh, that has been open to mostly to Kama'aina now for several months. And um, they're, they're doing well with the number of people we do have come. Uh, but it used to be about, you know, we'd have a good share of visitors and a good share of local Kama'aina in there. Things haven't changed much after the opening now with Pounders. We still have all the same rules that we, we helped to pioneer, I believe, in many ways, with the social distancing, hand wash, uh, sign in uh, for contact tracing. Uh, everyone wears masks unless you're actively eating. All of those rules we we carefully monitor and maintain those um but what about the menus have you changed the menus um no not really the menus have stayed very much the same where where the big changes came were in the luau we do now have just the one luau restaurant open and just the one venue so like i said we we're only operating at about 12% of the venue, the luau capacity that we used to have. Um, that's that's a problem that has, because luau is uh, it's, it's a, a, an economies of scale issue. If you have yeah. a, a little tiny luau, it's not the same thing as a big one. And, no. And of no. course, you, you still have to pay the expenses. Yeah, absolutely. And, and on the North Shore, nothing is cheap. Everything crumbles to dust within months. So it's constant maintenance, constant upkeep. But uh, we feel right now in this soft start mode that we're in, which is 250, we cap the luau at 250 people a day. Um, so a it allows us, what's that? A lot of people. Well, I mean, it's in the absolute number, it's quite a few people. I mean, it's, at the height of it, how much was it? It was, it was a lot. <laughs> we had, we would uh, run two, two of those venues twice a night. Um, for, that was just our luau's. And then we have our buffet, which uh, operates uh, separately. Is that both uh, outside? So all of our luau's are outside. Our buffet restaurant is not outdoors. And that's one of the reasons we haven't opened it yet. Um, the luau's, since they are outdoor venues, we are more confident that we can operate those unquestionably safely. safely yeah. Uh, but so, what about you? You 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 haven't opened them all right now. Or will you open them all, or are some of the restaurants going to not be open? Um, I it's a combination of there's not enough traffic to warrant opening all of them. Uh, if we had the demand, we'd have to really look carefully at, can we open each of them safely? I, I believe that we could. If the demand was there, we could open our luau's and operate as we are today in a safe manner. I believe sure. we could open our our other, uh, our, our buffet. We would obviously have to change that significantly because we would not allow people to serve their own food. We'd have to entirely change that format. You know, it strikes me that you're focusing on, as, as well you should, in terms of, you know, marketing anyway, um, safety. You're focusing on that. And people are very concerned about that. And, you know, I know a fair amount of your trade is from right here in the state, for that matter, right here in Oahu. So people aren't going to come out of their houses. They're not going to make the trip um, unless they feel that it's safe, especially around restaurants. Yeah. So the question, or the question is, and we've talked to, you know, Cheryl and I have talked to a, a lot of restaurants over the, the last few months. And it, it dawns on me that you, you must um, take the steps to be safe. But, and I, you know, hearing all the steps you're taking, it strikes me that it costs money to be safe. All these things you're talking about are different 
than they were before. They're, they're innovations that didn't, you didn't have to worry about it before. Now you do. Yeah. Um, and that's got to add to your daily expense. It's like those tests for, what did you say, $20,000 a day? That's a lot oh, of we, bread yeah. that you didn't have to pay before. Yeah. Um, so query, how do you handle that? I mean, what, how do you make yeah. that work? Because that's that's right off the bottom line. Yeah, no, it, it's painful. And and it, it is, those old tests are 20, about $20,000 a week. Um, a week, sorry. It's not, it's not sustainable long-term. We can't keep doing this. We're opening now to kind of get the flywheel turning, to get it going, to keep our, to get our people trained, to refine our processes, to make sure that we can do this safely and scale up only as we're capable of doing safely. But it's not, this is not sustainable. We can't do this and continue to provide for our people. Uh, something dramatic would have to happen if we can't get back to larger volumes, larger numbers. So we really need visitors to come back soon. The, the, the local market, um, we, we love our local market, but it's not enough to sustain what needs to be done here to provide jobs for the many hundreds of people that we have to provide, provide jobs for. Uh, I wonder, Cheryl, do you know the answer to this? And maybe you do too, Eric. Uh, are restaurant workers essential? They are. So, and can restaurant workers, uh, do they fit in the tiers yes. of uh, people who qualify for vaccines? Yes, we're 1C, so we're the next tier. Once all of the healthcare workers and the elderly, we're the next tier. So many of the restaurants, um, I sent out in January the sign-up sheet. So people just have to sign up and they're in the queue. And then once all of the essential workers and the kapuna have been vaccinated, yes, we're next on the list. So again, it's, um, you know, it's an executive marketing and uh, planning function, just like the closing and the reopening is, is how you see the future. And the vaccines uh, play a role in that. And it's especially helpful that, um, you know, restaurant workers can get those uh, vaccines. Um, and there'll hopefully be more vaccines. It'll be even easier. I'm talking about vaccines because I just came back from my second shot this morning oh. at Pier 2. So I'm, I'm feeling a little safer. On the other yeah, hand, like, you know, we're all watching to see the variants and whether they create a, a sort of a secondary epidemic. Who knows? <laughs> and finally, you're talking about an economy that has been in the tank. Uh, you know, while you were closed, a lot of businesses were closed, a lot of income was curtailed. People don't have the money necessarily. Although the truth is that Hawaii people spend a lot of money in restaurants. Cheryl knows. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's true. And, and when the floodgates are open, they are going to come back. Exactly. Huge numbers of people that come out of their homes and down for meal, meals after meals after meals in restaurants. I'm telling you now because I'll be there. I'll be included. <laughs> but you know what? What's your plan, Eric, going forward? I mean, when when is it this the coast going to be clear? When will it be safe? Yeah. Well, we we are really putting a lot of faith in that vaccine. <laughs> I don't even want to think about the potential of a second wave of variants. We, we believe the vaccine will make the difference and make it people help people to feel safe in coming out of their houses again. We want to welcome you here. We want to feed you well at the Luau or at Pounders. Um, and so we, we hope our local community will, will see the things we're doing, feel comfortable coming, feel like this, is, they could get a little uh, staycation of sorts, even if it's only an evening, to come out to the center and enjoy the show. I, I didn't even mention our show. We reopened Ha, our evening show. Um, it's funny to look in the audience and see people spaced in groups of no larger than five with six feet all around them in a 2,700-seat theater. <laughs> but it's still a good experience, and we still have, uh, you know, almost the same number of staff performing in the show, all with their inverted um, face shields. Oh, is that uh, right? And, and performing uh, in, in what we believe is a safe manner, but it's a fun getaway. And we would like to invite anybody on the island to come in. And uh, we think you can have a safe, fun experience here. We, and we really appreciate 
the work that HRA has done through Cheryl and through Greg to help the industry, help food, help restaurants to articulate what must be done to make it safe. And they've, their decisive, proactive leadership has been really critical to us. And, and I'm sure hundreds of other restaurants and mom and pop businesses and employers who are trying to get back to business, what they do is critical for us. And we've really, really appreciated all the work that they've, they've done to make it possible for us to open again. Well, you know, aside from, uh, you know, the straight business end of it, fact is that the Polynesian Cultural Center middle name is culture uh, and it's uh, all the more important these days to have a, a place where culture lives in Hawaii culture can be expressed to people locally and who come here and uh, the luau I'm you know I'm, I remember a day uh, you guys are too young when when, when there, there was uh, you know these uh, luau's all over the place every hotel had a luau everybody everybody now you know, I, I can't think of a regular luau of any size, uh, you know, that, that comes close to what you've been doing, what you are going, now going to resume doing at the Polynesian Cultural Site. You are the cradle of that element of the, what do you want to call the Hapahali days? Uh, remember Hapahali music? Yes. The days of Webley Edwards in Waikiki, and the days when Hawaii became famous around the world for offering this kind of you know, tourist delight. And uh, the luau to me is a very important thing that you offer. Uh, and, you know, I hope it comes back roaring like the other elements of your restaurant business. Well, thank you. Thank you. We, we hope so too. We take very seriously that charge to be that cradle of culture, a, a, a bastion of where we preserve that culture here on the island. And, and the Hapahaole side of it, in part at the Luau, and we preserve that period of time in Hawaiian history, but also the more uh, pure uh, periods of Polynesian cultural history that we've strived to preserve. And, and we think Oni Pa'a really helps take that to the next level where it's, it's not, uh, you. I promise you, you will not see a cellophane skirt anywhere on that stage. <laughs> um, it tells a, a serious story um, a, about a, a wonderful human being and who did uh, a lot for her people. And so it's, it's a moving, touching experience, I believe. And a part, important part of our history, we don't want to lose. On the other hand, then you can go to the night show and there's a lot of fun and a lot of fire and, and a lot of uh, culturally rich, authentically accurate presentations there woven together in a way that I think is also moving, but fun and, and a little lighter at times. Very valuable. Very valuable. Looking forward to getting out there. Uh, now that the traffic's not as heavy. Well, now you've <laughs> had your second shot. You have no reason to not come. <laughs> really? I have to let it settle in. I have to develop oh. my antibodies, right? <laughs> okay. All right. We'll, we'll see you next week. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> Cheryl, uh, can you, uh, as you always do, can you summarize and, and try to pull all this together for our viewing audience? It's, it's like Eric said, you know, our chairman is Greg Maples, who is the director of restaurant services at the Polynesian Cultural Center. And with his leadership, that's how the Hawaii Restaurant Association has worked with our local Department of Health and, of course, using the CDC and FDA guidelines. So that's the protocol, the six foot distancing, the face mask, the extra sanitizing. So while our visitor count is still low. This is a great opportunity for our locals to visit and enjoy the Polynesian Culture Center and their famous Ali'i Luau. Our Hawaii restaurants and luau's are open and ready to serve you. The Hawaii Restaurant Association is the voice of Hawaii's restaurant and food service industry. And we're looking forward to dining together again and creating more delicious memories. Delicious memories, you hear that, Eric, that's great. <laughs> Now, this has really been very interesting to learn about the uh, Polynesian Cultural Center. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Cheryl, for setting it up. Always appreciate it. Aloha, you guys.